434. Use the standard free energy data in Appendix G to determine the free energy change for each of the following reactions, which are run under standard state conditions and are at 25 degrees Celsius. Then we have to identify each as either spontaneous or non-spontaneous at these conditions. Okay, so we have our equation CaO solid plus H2O liquid yields CaOH2 solid. Now we want to find that free energy change that is a delta G, right? G for Gibbs free energy. Gibbs was the scientist who came up with this, you know, uh, energy amount. And a change is always that delta, right? The triangle. Since we're using standard values, the back of a textbook, I'm solving for delta G notch. Anytime you see that notch, that means that we're using textbook values, standard values. So I went to the back of the textbook to find out what the delta G values for each of these compounds are. CaO is negative 603.3, H2O liquid is negative 237.1 kilojoules per mole, and calcium hydroxide is negative 897.5 kilojoules per mole. Now, if we have all delta G values and we want to find that change, the formula that we're going to use is this. Delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, is the sum... That's this little symbol here. So sum, aka addition, it's the sum of all the products, the delta G of the products, minus the sum of all of the delta G reactants. So in essence, products minus reactants. Now, are these values going to stay the same or are they going to be different? Well, it goes by the coefficients in your balanced equation. But for each one here, there's no number in front. That means that you had only one of them. And whatever number that you have in front, that's the number that you're going to multiply each compound. So I have one CAOs, so I'm going to just multiply the negative 603.3 times one. Now it's gonna be the same number, but I'm just showing you that, you know, if you had a two, you would multiply the number by two. So negative 237.1 is also gonna be multiplied by one, and same thing for the negative 897.5, that's gonna be multiplied by one. Now we need to sum it up. Literally, the balance equation says CaO plus H2O. So this value plus this value. On the product side, since I don't have two products, I don't have to sum up anything. So the amount for the products would just be that one product, negative 897.5, because it's being multiplied by one. Now I'm gonna use my calc key to figure out, well, what is that value? So negative 603.3 plus a negative 237.1. And I get negative 840.4. Here are my two values now that I'm going to plug into my equation. So let's go for it. Delta G for the whole entire reaction equals products minus reactants, negative 897.5 minus um, the negative 840.4. Minus a negative, that's, you know, keep change change, you're adding a positive, but I'm gonna put this into the calculator and you'll see that it's the same thing, right? So let's see, delta G for the whole entire reaction is negative eight, nope, just kidding, that's a nine, 897.5 minus, and then I'm just gonna go up here and grab that number. Enter, and it's a negative 57.1. Units for the delta G is just kilojoules because you take your kilojoules per mole, and for each one, oh boy, for each one, you multiply by that coefficient. That coefficient value are mole values. So mole goes bye bye, kilojoules is where it's at. Okay, one answer done. Delta G, the free energy change is a negative 57.1 kilojoules. Now from here, is that spontaneous or is that non-spontaneous? Well, this is the information that you need to know. Delta G, anytime that it's less than zero, that means, well, first that means that it's a negative value, but that means that the reaction's gonna be spontaneous. It does not need any additional 
external energy source to make your product. However, on the flip side, if your delta G is greater than zero, it's non-spontaneous and you do need that extra oomph to get to your products. Now, let's see here. Can I, I think I accidentally, I don't know why I, oh, there we go. We can just clean this up. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So now let's see, negative 57.1, that's a negative value. All delta Gs that are negative are spontaneous. So no extra energy that is needed to go from reactant to the product. And that's it. That's the answer, guys. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. Just when I get the word out there, we're almost at 25,000 subscribers, and that's all because of you guys. I really do appreciate all of your support, your kind comments along this, this journey thus far. My brother and I, we really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Let's keep learning. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.